Hi, I'm Adam Willis. I'm a freelance writer based in Washington, D.C. I write about religion, politics, and the intersection of Christianity and populism. And I'm Eliza Lopez, photographer based in Manila. We'd like to tell you about a project we've been working on with the support of the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting. This fall, I traveled to the Philippines to work with Eloisa on several stories about the response of the Philippine Catholic Church to the country's brutal war on drugs. Since President Rodrigo Duterte was elected in 2016, as many as 25,000 Filipinos, most of them very poor, have been executed in police operations and vigilante killings. At the same time, Duterte has waged a culture war against the Catholic Church. With four in five Filipinos identifying as Catholic, the Philippines is one of the most Catholic countries in the world. And historically, the church has been at the fore of political activism in the country, even overthrowing the dictator Ferdinand Marcos in 1986. But as the Philippines slipped back into authoritarianism, the Catholic Church was cautious and slow. Duterte forced the church onto its heels, antagonizing its clergy and lobbying vulgarities at bishops, priests, believers, saints, Pope Francis, and even at God. His sustained popularity has forced the church into a precarious position, and even the priests don't seem to know how much moral authority they still have. Though the leadership of the Catholic hierarchy was slow to respond, a small group of lower-ranking clergy has led opposition since day one. We met with priests, nuns, and brothers who have played key roles in grassroots efforts to document human rights abuses, provide aid and protection, and ultimately to bring accountability. We also met with many of the mothers, widows, and family members who have found security and community in the church. Many of the victims' families are still in danger, as well as the clergy who have decided to help them. One priest who has been documenting the terrorist connection to death squad killings has been living and hiding outside of the Philippines. And in the last year, at least three priests have been killed under mysterious circumstances. One of the leaders in the grassroots efforts of the church is Brother Jun Santiago, a redemptorist who has been instrumental in documenting drug-related killings in Machu Manila. Last November, we accompanied Brother Jun in Cebu province to document killings and meet with the church leadership in its diocese. What we found in Cebu was representative of the Philippine Church at large, an institution caught on its heels, searching for answers and grappling for the right response. The extension of drug-related killings beyond Manila has forced people like Brother June to expand their jurisdictions, providing aid to affected families in new, unfamiliar parts of the country and urging local church leadership to take a moral stand. Today, the Catholic Church of the Philippines is regaining its, its moral voice, more and more clergy are joining in the chorus of dissent, but it may be too little too late. The church has never been on such precarious footing in its long history in the Philippines. In our reporting, we wanted to capture the urgency of the crisis facing the Catholic Church under Duterte. Many reject the politicization of the pulpit, while others believe that the, that the church is the only institution capable of bringing an end to the violence. We think that this story represents a modern test of an older question. How can the Catholic Church remain a moral beacon under an amoral regime? We believe that this story has profound importance for the war on drugs in the Philippines, for the religious future of one of the most Catholic countries in the world, and for the global, for the global Catholic Church. Thank you very much for reading, and thanks to the Pulitzer Center for supporting our work.